going on guys? You can follow me on Instagram at Shane Baker Studios and today I'm going to walk you through adding watermarks to your photos using Photoshop, Lightroom, and Capture One. So we're going to start off with Lightroom. It's the one that most photographers are probably familiar with. Um, they may even have it. Uh, so we've got Emily. She was a uh, she's graduating senior. So this is a senior portrait session that I recently shot in Sedona. Just amazing background, some really cool colors, uh, really great family. So we've got 35 images here that we wanna add the watermark to, but I don't wanna do it manually and I don't wanna do it individually. That's gonna take up a lot of my time. So how do I do it in bulk? Simply click on edit, go down to edit watermarks. Right off the get going to have the option of putting either in a text or a graphic. So if I have a graphic, a logo that was designed for me or I designed myself, simply click on that. You navigate to wherever that logo is. Preferably make sure your logo is a PNG format, meaning that uh, Anything behind the image, behind that logo, will be able to be visible. So you don't want to make you want to make sure that your logo isn't like a big square of white, for example, right in the corner of your image. So make sure those are PNGs. For me, I simply use uh, text and I type out Shane Baker Studios. So here's your text editor, and you'll notice that it pops up right here. Now you've got all your basic font. Uh, style and alignments that you can change. One thing that I love to do is take the watermark effect, the opacity down as much as possible. Now you can barely see it in this preview, but once it goes through, I know that right around six to 10% is good for me. I like my watermarks to be more subtle. Uh, to be honest with you, it, I think it kind of ruins an image. The bigger, the bolder that the watermark is, that's not the focus. Uh, the focus is obviously Emily. Now these are only for her social media, um, her print images that uh, she's going to print at home. I don't put a watermark on those. Um, that's just personal, uh, I guess, personal preference. So here you can change the size. We're going to go ahead and bump up the opacity so you can see what we're doing. But you can come in here and change the size of the logo, obviously, right? And then you can also anchor it to different points on your image. And you'll see that as I hit these anchor points, it moves it around. So pick wherever you want it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drop that proportion down again, pretty tiny. Do the watermark effects. We'll take it down to, I will say about 10%. Cool, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on that. It's gonna give me um, an option to name it. So we'll just do test, because I've already got something similar. Can't type, here we go. Create, boom. So now that that's done, you come over here to file and you go to your export, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select all these images, then go to export, or else it would just export that one, one file. So we're gonna go here to choose uh, where I want this to go. So since this is just a test, we're gonna put it on my desktop. And actually, here we'll do this. We'll do a new folder. We'll call it test. Perfect, we'll select that one. Okay, a few options here. Uh, number one gives me the option to rename the file. So for example, uh, we'll put in here Shane Baker Studios. Now I always recommend that you put the name of your photography business in as the, as the title, as the name of the, the file because when people look online, that does give you a little bit of an SEO boost. I don't think it's a huge amount, but I certainly know that when you search for Shane Baker Studios, you see all my images pop up and I think a portion of that has to do with the fact that I name all of them Shane Baker Studios and then whatever it is. So this would be a senior portrait session, uh, say Sedona. And the idea behind that is if someone's looking for a senior portrait session online or the word Sedona, they may possibly run into this image, right? So put that down here. File settings, uh, we'll say JPEG, quality 80, because this is gonna be saved for social media, so I typically put my quality at 80. The long edge, um, my pixels will be at 2048. What this means is that it's gonna resize the image so that the longest side, whether it's the height or the width, will be 2048 pixels across. Now this is just my personal preference for making it look great online, um, and it also allows people to, basically if they wanna share it, people are gonna share the image online, but they can't make a full size print out of something of this quality. So let's come down here, we'll select watermark. So this is already checked, but we'll check it. And then this gives me the option here to select all these different watermarks. So these are previous watermarks that I've already saved. Here's our test one, we'll select that one. And then we'll hit export. 
and we'll let it do its thing. Now we'll come back to that here in just a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to Photoshop. Now in my opinion, Photoshop is not gonna be the most effective way to do bulk watermarking of your images simply because there's more steps involved. I typically do that in Capture One or in Lightroom. But if you wanna use Photoshop, here's how you'll do it. We're gonna go ahead and open up this image. We'll go ahead and select this one here. Now what we have to do is create an action in Photoshop, which is basically an automated system, or excuse me, an automated series of steps that Photoshop will take for you after you've recorded them. Here's what I mean. We've got our image here, and we're gonna go ahead and we'll see, here's Shane's actions. We're gonna make sure that your action panel is open, and we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So you're gonna click on this little icon right here next to the garbage can called create a new action. We'll call this test uh, logo, okay? We'll save it to Shane's actions. Function key, I'm not gonna worry about any of that stuff. We're gonna simply hit record. Now what Photoshop is now doing is recording everything that I do into a series of steps that I can go back and play again later. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on this little corner and we're gonna go ahead and add Shane Baker Studios. Now I'm gonna highlight that, I'm gonna change the color to white. Okay, and we'll take my move tool, and we'll move it over just a little bit. Now it's nice and small, I like that. I'm gonna take the opacity, I'm gonna drop that down from 100 down to, let's see, about 10%. Now, like I said before, I'm a big fan of making sure that my watermarks are almost hidden. I think the most important thing is to make sure the image stands out. Uh, one thing that I don't enjoy seeing is when photographers have their logos super massive and large and it kind of ruins the whole shot. Like that is not what people want to see online. So anyways, we'll move that, take that back down, drop our opacity back down to let's say 13, 9, 10%. Perfect, very good. All right, and then we're gonna hit, um, oh actually here, let's do this. We've got our move tool selected. So what I'm gonna do is select this layer and the background layer together. Now I have these options that open up for me. And what it tells me is that I can take whatever my font is, or excuse me, that text layer. I'm gonna align it to the bottom edge. Boom, so you'll see that it moved down. In fact, maybe I should go ahead and bump up the opacity on this really quick for you so you can see that a little bit better. So I'm gonna move this again. We're gonna move this up right here. I'll show you what that just did. I'm gonna select both those layers. These now become options for me. If I click on this one, it's gonna align that text with the bottom edge of this layer, this background layer. Great. Now, if I click on this one over here, it's gonna align it, boom, right there to that edge. And then, I don't really want it necessarily in the corner corner, so then I'll take my up arrow, and I'll go up, hold on, the nudge, because the layer is locked. Oh, here, then I gotta, Take this, we'll just take our text layer, we're gonna nudge it up, one, two, three, four, five, and I'll nudge it, lud, nudge it over five, one, two, three, four, five, perfect. And that's what I'm looking for. And I'll take my opacity, we'll drop it back down to 10%, and then I'm gonna hit stop. Now, here's what happened. Photoshop basically recorded everything that I just did. Now there's a few extra steps because I went back to show you um, a few things and so I went over it a couple times, like changing the opacity, things like that. So Photoshop was um, looking at those things as well, but in yours it's gonna be much simpler, it's gonna be much more streamlined. So now I have this action saved. So here's how you bulk watermark your images in Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that, we'll say no. Now you had to go through that process on one image because you had to have a photo, go through the process and tell Photoshop what it is that you wanted to record. Now I can come over here and go to, we'll do scripts, we'll go to image processing. So select the images to process. We're gonna select that folder called print. That's the one with all the unwater, unwatermarked images on our desktop. Okay, and I'm gonna save them Let's go ahead and select a folder. We're gonna save them inside of that test folder. Boom, there you go. Save as JPEG. This is for social media, so I'll go ahead and drop that down to 10, resize to fit my long edge or my width um, 
excuse me, my width or my height will be 2048 pixels, whichever one's longest. And down here is where it's really important. You click on run action. That is what you just created. By having Photoshop record all that information, you created an action. So you're telling Photoshop now, I want you to take all these images that are in that folder, that print folder, and I want you to run this action on it. So under Shane's actions, I'm gonna go ahead and click, there it is, my test logo. And what Photoshop will do is go through and put out Shane Baker Studios, it'll change the opacity, and it'll move it over to the corner of the image for every single photo in there. We're gonna go ahead and run that and let it do its thing, cool. So next we're gonna go into Capture One. So Capture One is an incredible piece of software. I absolutely love it for editing my raw images uh, and getting them into TIFFs before taking them into Photoshop. So they make it really easy to watermark bulk images. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's the photos from, from Emily's photo shoot. In this panel, you're gonna click on this little icon right here, this little gear icon. And you've got a few little tabs here. You wanna make sure that your process recipe is open, okay? And usually it starts here on the basic uh, file tab. You're gonna walk yourself over here to where it says watermark. You're gonna click on watermark. It's gonna ask you what kind. Right now it says none. So when I process these images, it's not gonna add any watermarks. Just like in Lightroom, it's gonna give me the option to do either a text or an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and say a text. You type in your text here, Shane Baker Studios. Just like in Lightroom, you can adjust the opacity, all this information. So you can see the text down here on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and capitalize all this just to keep it uniform. Okay, perfect. You can change the scale of it, right? How large it's gonna be. We're gonna go ahead and make that really tiny. Uh, we'll drop that opacity down, like I said, to right around 10%. You can't really tell that it's here, but when they look at the image online, they'll be able to barely see that on there. Then you're gonna select your output. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose where I want that to go. So we said that we're saving all these in this test folder. There it is, okay. Actually, I should probably put this in a separate folder just in case it gets jumbled up. One moment. We'll add a new folder. We'll call this Capture One. Okay. So we'll save it in our Capture One folder. Here we go. Uh, it gives me the option to rename these images. Now, here's the cool thing that I also love about Capture One that makes it really simple. Let's say that I wanted to rename all these photos before processing them, simply select them all, right, oops, sorry, right click, and then click on batch rename, and then batch rename gives me the opportunity to go ahead and give it any name that I want. So, close that out. Once you're done, you've got your text, you got your logo set up the way you want to, you hit process, and boom. There you go, simple as that. So guys, that is how you do batch watermarking in Capture One, Lightroom, and Photoshop. If you have any questions, make sure you comment below. Let me know what you think and follow me on Instagram at Shane Baker Studios. Take care.